Hi everyone, Matt here again. So, as I promised yesterday, I'm going to go through the uh, rule books for the um, Empire of Eagles game. Okay, Eagles of Empire. I get that wrong every single time. Eagles of Empire game, which is set in the Franco Prussian War between 1870 to 1871. Now, yesterday I went through all the, uh, the figures that you can get for this. Well, the, the infantry, okay, along with General Bredow. Um, but today I'm just going to take you through the rules that come with the starter army set. So, basically, it's two PDFs that come with the starter army set, okay. Um, you, you get the infantry set, which is um, called, uh, sorry, you get the cavalry, artillery, and hero set uh, rules, which is draw book two, okay. And you get the infantry um, rules, which is drill but one. Now, to be honest, all of the rules are pretty much contained within drill but one. Okay, there are a few um, rules for the cavalry and artillery, but essentially the majority of the rules are in drill but one. So it could be that you only really need um, drill but one. Drill but uh, two is a, there's just kind of a bit more information about the cavalry and the artillery and the heroes involved. Um, if you decide to buy these um, rules separately, they are £15 each from the uh, Eagles of Empire website. Now, that's quite expensive because these aren't books, these are just PDFs, okay? So they are two PDFs and they are um, each PDF is around um, 38 pages long, okay? A5 page, uh, A5 size page long. So... That's a little bit steep, I think, £15 each for the two basic rule books, especially when they're quite simple rules, they're very straightforward rules. Okay. So initially I was very interested to see what they would do with these rules because um, when I first bought the, uh, the figures, my intention was to kind of use them with black powder because I thought they'd work really well with black powder. But the more that I read about the period, the Franco-Prussian War, I discovered that they um, they basically they fought in much more open order than the Napoleonic War or the American Civil War. So I was thinking it would be quite difficult to kind of represent the usual tactics of the period using black powder. I know you've got kind of open order and skirmish and mixed order rules within black powder, um, but it just didn't seem to fit to this uh, this period. So I was quite interested to see how these rules play out. So I'm going to basically I printed these off from the PDF and I'm just going to take you through the basic rules just to kind of go through. So star is essentially uh, a lot of uh, bump about the Franco-Prussian War, okay, the German coalition, the Republic of France, etc., etc. So you know read read through that. It's really good stuff. It's interesting stuff. It's really nicely printed and presented. That's one of the main things of it. Okay. And then basically it takes you through some of the basics of the cards. I'll go through that in a second. And then it starts to talk about um, basing and cohesion. So basically what happens with this game is that when you buy packs, you can buy um, packs of 16 uh, miniatures. okay, And essentially they divide up into two squads of seven. So this is a squad based game. okay, So... Each squad has got seven troopers or seven models in it, okay? Um, and then you join those two squads together to make a section. So a squad of seven miniatures, uh, seven miniatures is a squad, 14 miniatures is a section, and then to that section you add a command base, okay, which is this red one there, okay? The way they suggest that you organise your squad is you basically put um, two men... Uh, on two bases and three men on a third base okay so you've got three bases per squad um, six bases of men per section plus command base seven bases altogether now the reason why they do this is later on in the rules you'll see that basically a squad has a strength a strength three um, two or one and that is the number of bases that you've got left after you've taken casualties and every time you take a casualty, you remove a base. Okay, So basically, and you drop down a strength. So three bases is strength three, 
you lose a casualty, you're down to strength two with two bases. You lose another casualty, down to strength one with one base left. So that's the way they kind of want you to kind of organise it. And they kind of talk, talk about um, three minis on a 40 millimetre round base. Now, I've measured this up, and that is pretty tight for these uh, miniatures because the bases on these miniatures they're quite large to be honest okay so I, I'm kind of thinking that I might actually not put them on um, 40 millimeter round bases I might put them on square bases if anything okay and they suggest that uh, two minis go on a 30 millimeter round base and there's a representation of that there one of the reasons for this is cohesion okay uh, when you actually um, play the game you need to keep your squads and your officer base in cohesion so they can't be more than two inches uh, between each um, unit okay each base can kind of two inches between it and in order for a command base to command both squads or in other words the whole section they've got to be at least two inches to at least one of the bases within each squad okay so there you can see there's the command base and there's let's call it squad one squad two okay so they need to maintain cohesion all of the time so essentially that's the way these uh, units are organized the unit organized into squads which are then organized into sections so I think the idea is then you've got lots of sections of troops on the battlefield okay at least in terms of infantry now because I bought the starter pack I've got 32 um, Prussians and I've got 32 French so I've essentially got four squads of French and four squads of Prussians so you know um, so I've got two sections of Prussians and two sections of um, French so that's enough for me to to play a game with okay so that's basically organization and basing but as I say, you could probably base them out however you like. I mean, no one sticks to basing anymore, do they? Okay, so a little bit of information there, uh, just a bit of information about how they're organised, yeah? So basically, infantry squad, infantry section, and then uh, adding an officer in order to give commands. Um, they also talk about deployment zones. Now, deployment zones are quite important because this is all about objectives, and this game is about objectives. So the idea is that... The objectives um, which are on the edges of the zones and closest to the deployment zones are actually quite easy to take. Okay, So what they suggest is that um, a tactical objective that is um, close to a deployment zone um, is able to c generate four command points. Now I'll talk about command points in a second. And the, one that's the ones that are in the centre or more difficult to obtain are four command points plus uh, an ammo round. Okay, so essentially, um, basically, you need to take uh, these objectives in order to gain command points. Okay, so that's the objective of the game, really, is taking objectives, holding objectives, and gaining command points each turn. All right, so uh, once you've taken an objective um, and you can hold it at the end phase then you gain the command points from that objective and the ammo round from that objective. Okay. Now what do you do with those things? Well, the start of the next round, in the, uh, in the start phase, you collect the resources, so you get the command points, and then you can do several things with the command points. You can buy reinforcements, okay? So basically you buy reinforcements and you can add them to your... Uh, unit so they come in on the deployment zone okay or you can um, spend them on doctrines or abilities so you can you know spend them on abilities for your commanders and your leaders or your uh, your army okay so you can spend uh, them on abilities or you can uh, activate the abilities of officers with your command points or you can buy victory points and it, uh, and you can buy additional ammo points as well, which you can spend uh, too. Okay, so basically, in order to buy victory points, um, it's basically one CP one plus equals one victory point. So I think the objective of the game is to acquire as many victory points as you can, but 
you're trying to spend your um, command points on lots of different things. So you, this is where the kind of tactical idea of the game comes in. Is you, you're trying to think about, well, what do I need to spend these command points on this time? Do I need to buy ammo in order to activate the abilities of officers? Because ammo is basically another type of currency that's used to activate the abilities of some units. Okay, or do I need to activate the abilities of units using my command points, or do I need to buy more reinforcements with my command points, or do I want to start clocking up my victory points with my command points ready for the end of the game? Okay, so this is where it becomes tactical in that you you, you know you you're kind of thinking about how you're going to spend your command points. Okay, um, so that is really the kind of tactical element of the game is the kind of capturing of the objectives, gaining of the command points and spending of the command points each turn. Line of sight is 360, you can see all the way around, okay? Um, so it's a little bit like um, Lion Rampant in that sense, okay? You can shoot in any direction, okay? There are um, penalties for obviously shooting through walls, terrain has all its usual penalties, okay? Um, so the the turn then the the round uh, of a game, okay. Uh, as you can see, here's your victory conditions at the bottom. This is a, sh a short scenario. Um, the attack on uh, Rotherberg, um, and this is August 1870. So this is just a single scenario idea. And at the bottom there, you can see victory conditions is 18 victory points, okay. Uh, available reinforcements: French line infantry squads, Prussian line infantry squads. Okay, an available officer doctrine. So this is basically what you spend your command points on. All right. So there are different things you can spend. And if you can, I don't know if you can see there, but you can see there's a cost of command points there, and that's a little uh, uh, logo indicating ammo. So that costs ammo as well as command points. And these are doctrines that you can pay for uh, with your. Um, with your command points okay so or you can buy victory points okay and if you get to 18 victory points then you've won but the problem is if you're just spending your points on victory points all the time your opponent might be buying abilities bringing in reinforcements and he might have enough to overtake and take your objectives off you so it might not be worth spending all your command points on victory points each turn so you know I think there's a quite a nice tactical element there okay uh, on a turn by turn basis um, turn sequence is basically quite straightforward you get the resources at the start so you pick up your command points then you buy your reinforcements and your victory points okay uh, so you spend your command points okay if you want to or you can hang on to them to spend them on abilities later then you do movement okay and charging uh, and then shooting, and then resolution of hand-to-hand, -hand, and then the end phase. Okay, so how does this work then? So, basically, um, with the movement, the, the charge is part of the move phase, as it is with most. So, you can see all the stats on here. So, movement rate for a uh, French line infantry is 6 inches. Okay, so they can move 6 inches. Um, and the unit strength is three. Now, as that unit goes down, uh, that's for three bases. So, as the unit goes down, it will go down to two bases, and then it will go down to uh, one base. Okay, uh, once they've lost two bases. So, basically, unit unit strength is the same as the number of bases that you've got for your um, your squad. All right. Okay. So, um, movement. So, French line infantry move six inches. The Prussian line infantry also move six inches. I'm assuming that um, cavalry will move further. Okay, of course. And so the, the stats are all on these very nice cards that come with the with the different infantry groups. Okay, so there's no chance of ever forgetting what the stats are. You also get a quite nice um, card which has all the information on it as well. Okay, movement rate, needle gun range, etc., etc. Okay, and special abilities at the bottom there. Those are things that you can buy with um, command points. Okay, so 
movement is really straightforward and you basically charge into hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat in your movement phase as well and then that's resolved later then comes shooting now shooting is essentially uh, dependent upon your strength okay so when you shoot you basically shoot so many dice you have so many dice to roll in your shooting phase okay here we go shooting okay so if you're at strength three you roll dice on a four plus if you're at strength two you roll, roll to hit on a five plus if you're at strength one you roll to hit on a six plus now that's exactly the same as your save as well so your unit strength dictates your shooting and your strength okay so how many dice do you roll well that's your firepower stat okay on there so as you can see the Prussian line infantry they've got 3d6 so if they're at 3 strength they've got 3d6 at 4 plus if they're at 1 strength they've got 3d6 at 6 plus how do you save well you save the same number of dice okay you say you roll the um, defense value okay sorry no you don't roll a defense value you roll uh, yeah sorry you do you roll a defense value so you only get 2d 2d6 okay yeah so that's that's that means that if you hit with all three dice um, and you were rolling against a similar kind of unit the defense value of 2d6 they will basically take at least one hit okay so they need to roll the same so four plus on 2d6 five plus on 2d6 or six plus on 2d6 okay depending on their strength the strength value okay so you get the same number of dice depending on your unit strength it's the roll uh, that changes uh, depending on your unit strength okay so they are 3d6 with a 2d6 defense and so are the French line infantry as well so they've got they've got the same stats which is a little bit you know um, maybe they could be tougher or different slightly okay the main thing is the uh, chaser pot rifles that the French have got are 27 inches which is phenomenal compared to the uh, 18 inches of the um, Prussian Drassler needle guns so you could try and sit back maybe you're going to get at least two shots off at the Prussian line infantry with your French before they even get close to you so that's a significant um, advantage I think okay so you roll to hit and then your defender rolls to save and takes away any uh, uh, rolls that are successful from your to hit okay yeah um, and anything that goes over so say they roll you roll three sixes yeah um, and they roll two sixes then they're still going to be hit by at least one hit all right um, so you're always going to hit okay if you manage to roll three dice um, over the, um, the to hit roll um, and once they take that one casualty they will lose a um, a base so their squad will drop down to two okay so it's really really straightforward um, a very straightforward system um, in terms of attacking okay hand to hand combat once you've charged into hand to hand combat and you're in uh, in your room base with each other you then roll your charge value okay so the charge value is slightly different again it's six plus five plus four plus okay depending on your unit strength okay um, and so this time you roll, you roll your charge value rather than your um, firepower okay so your charge value is basically what you roll in order to enter um, hand -to -hand or fight in hand to hand combat okay so it's the charge value versus the defense platform value so shooting at another unit's firepower versus defense value um, hand to hand combat is charge value versus defense value okay resolved in exactly the same way okay so it's really it's very very simple very simple um, rules all right there's not much um, in terms of complex complexity okay um i think the main thing is as i said it's the use of um the command points gained from tactical objectives to uh gain different abilities uh, and to use different different uh, um gain reinforcements etc so there you can see 
some of the special abilities that different units have got yeah so as you can see at the bottom of the uh, the card for the Prussian line infantry they've got that little tree and they've got the house so line infantry can cross through rough terrain and they can uh, they can enter buildings okay so that's their special abilities and here you can see uh, some of the things that you can do with command points on this side okay so special abilities overview so you can spend command points on uh, local militia okay um, ammunition okay uh, th this doctrine or unit requires an ammunition to uh, fire or activate so I haven't got any cards at the moment that have got this um, this ammunition symbol next to them all right um, but I'm sure that probably that will come with some of the other units okay so some units will need ammunition so you need to gain and buy ammunition in order to activate the special abilities of some of your units okay and that is pretty much it it's a very very simple game gain objectives gain command points spend command points on abilities and um, reinforcements and victory points try to get as many victory points as you can up to the total while trying to kind of use your command points on other things as well um, shooting is simply a case of movement is simply a case of of moving when you want to there's no command roles involved okay um, you basically your shooting to hit and your hand to hand is based on the strength of your unit so you know if you've got one um, one base then you know, your unit strength is one if you've got two bases unit strength is two three bases unit strength is three so you know six plus with one strength five plus with two strength and three plus with three strength okay and you roll the number of dice accordingly depending on your firepower and your charge roll and you roll that versus their defense value and they roll that in defense so it's very very straightforward um, almost almost too straightforward to be honest okay just thinking of ways where how it could be maybe complicated any further um, just to make it a bit more interesting okay um, so I quite like it I mean I do like simple systems um, you know I, I like complex systems as well I like, I like pike and shot and black powder and things like that that okay they're not too complex but they're more complex than some but I do also like pike, pikeman's lament and Lion Rampant, which are very simple systems. And this kind of reminds me of um, Lion Rampant, really. This is kind of almost like a black powder version of Lion Rampant, where, you know, just a command roll and a movement and a roll and a command roll to shoot, etc. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. And that's, that's all you've got. Okay. So, like I say, it's a squad based game. Um, small squads of seven. Um, models on three bases and um, placed into two groups which make up a section you can have as many sections as you want I expect okay so I'm gonna leave that there so that is basically the French uh, sorry the the infantry okay this is the the infantry rules all right and uh, next video I'm going to talk about the um, cavalry and the uh, artillery rules all right and I think what we might see in the next video with the cavalry and artillery rules we'll probably see that some of them are um, you actually need to spend ammunition and things like that in order to activate cavalry and artillery okay right thanks for watching I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you've uh, gained something from this and if you're intending to play this game you know you can get hold of the PDFs um, to be honest, I think if you are intending to get into this and you want to have a good a bit of a go at it, I would buy the Army Starter Set. It's 99 quid, okay, which sounds a lot of money, but you do get, you know, you get um, uh, quite a few models for that. You get 64 metal figures for 99 quid, which is really good. I mean, that's that's only slightly more than a pound each for a metal figure. I mean, they're, they're, they're usually two quid each from most places, and you get the two PDFs free. And they're fifteen pound each anyway, so you may as well get the starter bo box, okay? If you're going to start playing this, and then you've got the rules, and you've got um, four squads of French and four squads of Prussians, plus several command bases as well, 
So that's perfect for starting this game. It does remind me a little bit of bolt, like bolt action, really, in your kind of squad-based movement. And I imagine that this is a game that you wouldn't play in kind of big open fields like you would with um, Napoleonics. I think this is a game where it would be really nice to play it in a kind of city or town environment. Yeah, maybe kind of think about a Paris blockade or something like that, or Sedan. You know, where you're not out in the open fields, but you're actually fighting street by street. I think it, with objectives within the streets and within the towns and the cities, that would be a nice kind of way to play this game, I think. Okay, guys, right, so I'm going to let you go and uh, speak to you next time. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.